Hey, what's going on guys? Okay, so a couple months back I did a tutorial video on how to make a leather sheath for your knife. And since I did that video, I've had a lot of positive comments and remarks in regards to that video. A lot of people are expressing how much they enjoyed it and how much it taught them. So I want to go ahead and keep on with that. So today we're going to make a leather sheath for your Baco Laplander. Um, most of you guys have one of these or might be looking at getting one. They are a fantastic saw and uh, quite frankly you need something to carry it in. So take a look at this picture and this is exactly the kind of sheath that we're going to make for this. If this is something that you're interested in, hang with me and we're going to uh, teach you how to do it. Okay, now before we get started is what you're going to need is you're going to need two pieces of paper. Okay. Now is what we're going to do is we're going to find a middle line on our piece of paper. So I am going to measure in four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Now I'm going to repeat that exact same step on my second piece of paper. Okay, and is what that center line is going to represent is that is actually going to represent the center of our sheath. So now we need to determine the top of our sheath. So if that center line is the center of our sheath, we lay our item on here, we can see that I don't have a whole lot of room to work with. So the top of my sheath is going to have to be up here. So I'm just going to measure in one inch Like so. So now we have the center of our sheath and what's going to be the top of our sheath. So the next step, we're going to determine how far we want our Laplander to sit into the sheath. Somewhere in that ballpark looks good to me. So I'm going to turn my Laplander up on its back spine just like this right on the center line and now I'm going to slowly rotate it over and lay it on its side just like that. Now I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to come back in with my pin and I'm going to make an outline.
just like so. Okay, and as you can see, we're kind of left with a spot from here to here that's blank. Now we could either freehand this on up, or you can use something like this, which is called a flexible curve. And basically, put that on there and kind of shape it and conform it, just like so. And now not only can you make a very accurate line, but you can also see that contour and whether or not you like it. So then you can adjust it. Maybe you want it out a little bit further this way. You can do that. Maybe you want it in more. You can do that. So I'm going to put it right about there. There we go. Finish that out. Now, if I turn this to the side, I don't know if you can really pick this up on camera, but the distance from my center line from here to here is wider than it is from here to here. Okay? Now, that's going to cause a problem when I stick my Laplander in and out of the sheath. So you can see as I pull this back, this section here is going to want to rub over here. See what I mean? So basically we're going to take the ruler and we're going to go from the center line to here and find our widest point. And basically it looks like our widest point is going to be right about two and a quarter. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here we're going to make a little mark come up here make a mark So you can see that has extended that section over so now it's no longer wider here than it's going to be here. They're going to be the exact same. Okay, so now I'm going to put my belt loop in that section there. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to measure over about a half an inch that's where I want my belt loop to start is at the half inch mark and now that section here is going to be my belt loop Okay, now we are going to extend that outline out even further, okay? Normally, a half an inch is going to be suitable for something like this, but this Laplander is pretty thick in the handle, so we're going to extend that out even more. We're going to go, oh, well, let's say... Let's go 5 sixteenths. That should be suitable enough, I would think. And we're just going to make marks. All the way around our sheath.
Now when we go to cut the welt itself, we won't make the welt 5 16 There's really no point in it being that wide. We'll make the welt itself a half inch. But that extra sixteenth of an inch is just going to give us just a little bit more breathing room. Okay, so you can see all those little line or them little dots there. So now we're simply going to um, play, connect the dot, or you can use your flexible curve as well. Okay, so now we have extended it out, and we also have a nice little mark for our welt. So now, I'm going to take my flexible curve, and I'm going to intersect my sheath with my belt loop. Something like that should look pretty good, I guess. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this lower section out. And there is the lower section of our template. I'm going to lay my ruler on the spine, fold it up, And now I'm just going to simply trace along the outside edge. Open it up. Now I'm going to go back with my flexible curve again kind of find an angle that I like
And now I'm simply going to cut this part out. Okay, so here is our rough draft of our template. So you can see now, when we fold it over, we've got ourselves a nice little paper sheath. See what I was talking about here, where that section is going to be our belt loop when it folds over. And all those curves and everything else should be making sense to you now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a final draft for our template. That's where this other piece of paper is going to come into play. We're going to take this center line. We're going to line this center line up with this one down as, as far down as we can go. And then just start tracing. Move it off. Now we're going to add in part of the belt loop. Just kind of line it up right there. And these gaps right here, we're just going to kind of freehand and adjust that curve and now when we cut this template out that is going to be our our final template all right now one thing i forgot to mention when you get before you get to this point here and you have your rough template. It's a good idea to go ahead and fold it over, stick your item in there. Then you'll get an idea if it's going to actually be a good fit or if you need to adjust it or anything else. It can be kind of difficult at times to really tell so what I'll do at times is I'll fold it over and I'll staple it together. Kind of do a mock-up, as you will. Because quite frankly, if this is tight in paper, you are not going to get it to work in leather. Because if it's loose in paper, then whenever you add the leather to it, it's going to be snug. And I can already tell that that's going to be a pretty good fit. I think once we add the leather into it, I think it's going to be a very good fit.